Hi, Eva here. Today I wanted to show you how to take a watercolor from nice to wow. And um, I already have this up on my YouTube channel uh, in just like a speed painting because there's really not a whole lot of uh, technique and um, other than just like uh, the basic. Uh, and um, you can watch that if you want to. And But otherwise, um, let's take this painting that it has color everywhere and it's nice, but it really is not very interesting in my opinion opinion there's not a lot of uh, drama here pretty predictable and I always teach my students and say that they are afraid of the darks and this would be a typical example of being afraid of the darks because you can see I have a lot of mid-tones here and a few lights we're not going to count the background right now but there's really not a full range of values saying from the lightest light to the darkest dark there is not like you know that big of a difference these are all mid-tones from lighter mid tones to darker mid tones so let's get uh, our guts up and let's try and drama this thing up and uh, this was my original inspiration just so you know and you can see in the original there's really not a lot of drama either but it's not about this one here now now it's about my painting and so I'm not really that concerned about what the inspiration looks like because now I want an interesting painting that's going to stop people in their tracks and this ain't it in my opinion so let's let's doctor it up so first things first i'm gonna get my puddles out and i got my blues out first i have a little bit of the um, cobalt blue which i've used in this painting there's antwerp blue here and here and here is indigo i haven't used indigo yet but i have used the antwerp blue that was my main blue here antwerp blue and burnt shenna and then together with the um, with the transparent yellow and there's also a little i've used a little bit of the uh, burnt shenna in some of the greens here and burnt sienna together with antwerp blue are going to create a very dark green so now i'm going to create a very dark green in here see it's not so bright so that's a good color and you know usually i don't mix a lot of colors directly on my palette i like to have my colors mix and mingle on the paper but that's what not what i'm looking for for this particular painting right at this point and let's see here we want to create another green with the cobalt blue and and here we're going to use our quinacridone gold. It's a little bit of a warmer yellow than the transparent yellow that I used in my first go around. So that's a nice little bit darker, not a little bit muted, not so bright green. So that's good green. And uh, then let's get a brighter green here with the Antwerp and also some of the quinacridone gold. So you can see that's a nice but a little bit darker, richer uh, green, but brighter than, much brighter than that one. And finally, I'm going to rinse that out finally take uh, our burnt shenna and mix it in here with our indigo and that didn't go very far so let's just get some more of that burnt shenna and mix that in here that's going to give us a really really rich dark forest green color and it still takes indigo is a super strong color so it's going to take quite a bit of the burnt shenna let's see i think we're probably there now of course i don't want it black but i want it very dark and i don't want it bright it's going to be my darkest dark and if i take a little bit of whatever I have on here that in so okay I got my puddles and um, I am going to just start out I am going to do uh, the ones that are away in the back first or underneath or whatever you want to say I'm gonna put a little bit of water in and the darkest there is always going to be at the bottom of each petal that's how that works and so I'm starting with that one and I actually feel that I want to have something that's a little bit more neutral so let's see here if we can do that so that's uh, the cobalt blue with some burnt shenna and a little bit of the quinacridone gold still feeling i need more blue because you know it's underneath there yeah let's get some blue in there all right there we go and just pull that out here i like that and then we're gonna drag it out with just a clean damp brush and there we have it and I'm going to continue doing that on all those that are underneath here. Here I'm doing it wet on dry. You can do either way. If you do wet on wet, it's a little easier to get rid of any hard lines. And if you do it this method, you just have to be a little quicker. That's basically what it is. And let's see here. A little darker on that side too. 
And so again, just like when I did the original wash, I really don't want any hard lines inside the leaves here or petals. I don't know what you call it. And then here, there's a real dark. Let's just get this one. This little one is really underneath. So I want those that are really underneath the bottom, like the third or the fourth layer down. They're just really dark there. And there's another one here that could be really dark like that. And I'm again just doing it wet on dry. And let's see, let's get that in there. So I have my brush pretty loaded with pigment so it doesn't run out on me. There's that. And this one is the one that's the furthest down so let's just go in and do a real dark in here in the little corner this area. Pull it up a little bit more here. That and then right away I need to go in with a damp brush. Don't have it too, too wet, but, and you have to be kind of quick because otherwise things are gonna dry and you're gonna get hard lines. We don't want that. And I'm just gonna go in again with my loaded brush here and just kind of pull that out a little bit. There. Can you see how it's already beginning to just, we did that one and I think I wanna do it again now that I see it. Then I wanna go in here. And again, I'm just going in wet on dry right now. And again, if that, if you are a slower painter, which there's nothing wrong with. Um, I would suggest you probably should wet the petal first. And I want to go up here too because it has like a fold over. So that's going to cast like a shadow. And then right away we go in with a clean damp brush. A little bit of the water out there. And then just pull the pigment out like this. Just fine tune it a little bit. And I wanna just drag it down like that so that I get a little bit of light there. Can you see? Uh, we're building up the drama and I can see here is another really dark, should be a really, really dark area. So I'm just gonna put that in like that there and we can go in and darken up a little bit for instance here this little space here would be quite a bit darker and I'm gonna dab on quite a bit of pigment so that it still stays moist so that I have a chance to go in and get my damp brush on it before it dries and I don't want to lose that bright brightness that I have so I want to make sure that I don't keep dragging that dark pigment all the way up so I have to rinse out my brush and go back in again and there we have it. I think that turned out pretty good. And we have another one we can darken there and here I think I do want to put a little bit of clean water on this petal before I go in with my real darks and um, I'm just dabbing around in the puddles that I have made here. So get a little bit of color variance and I want it really really dark here so it can push out that petal. See that also has a turn. And a little bit up the middle here, it'll be a little dark. I want to say that it kind of, you know, scoops down a little bit and dark pushes down and light swings forward. So if you keep that in mind, that'll help you. So let's just make sure we get it shaped the way we want and we can go back in here and just put a little bit more of that dark there. But I don't want a hard line. That's why I'm keeping this damp, clean brush at the ready so I can pull it out and get that soft edge that I'm after. Actually, I think it'll be a little, you know, darker right there. Kind of scoops in. And then I'm just going to clean up there. Can you see how the drama is building? And then we have another one there. And I want it lighter than this one, but darker than that one. So I can put that dark in here and a little bit darker down here. So I'm just dabbing in a little bit of that darker color. And then I'm going to go in and get a little bit of that little bit lighter color, that bluish color here. And then I'm gonna rinse out and beginning to loose the edge. And I want a little darker here on this side and then leave that light edge, I like that. So then I can push out this one, but still have that lighter edge towards that dark. There we go, I like that. And while that dries, we can go and doctor this one up. And let's go with this color here. Maybe this, a little bit of that color over here. And here again, I'm just gonna do it wet on dry, just like that. And actually, I wanna go up there. This. 
and then I just want to connect these two. Have it a little lighter there in the middle, just little color variants. It's out on the edge, so it's not, you know, we don't want to make it too interesting. I dabbed in a little bit more of that darker color down at the bottom there and then I'm just gently with a little number three brush just very gently I'm barely touching just want to make sure that I don't get a run back there we have that and uh, I think we can do another dark here on this side and then we're going to pull it out with a damp brush until we end up with a light side can you see that because I wanted light against dark dark against light and uh, here we have another one that should be adjusted a little bit. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is dry. So we have this one. Now, I don't want to go too dark because, see, I have dark on both sides. However, I want to darken it a little bit. And so I'm going into my blue puddle, blue, 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 green puddle, puddle here that I made with the, with the um, cobalt blue. And I'm just going to, I want to darken around this edge here of this petal, but I want to keep the light. And so I want to make this one also that kind of scoops down a little bit. So so let's just uh, get a clean brush on it before the edges dry on me and pull that out and I could even dip into a little tiny bit of yellow here just to give it a little pizzazz and then again I, I clean my brush and I no, don't want it too dramatic there see that gave it just a little bit more oomph this one here needs to be a lot darker feel let's go and you know you can keep darkening this is called glazing, actually, if you want to talk watercolor language. We are glazing right now. I think I already glazed this once, but now I could see, I think that's the one I started with actually, but now I could see that, you know, that wasn't enough. And so there's nothing wrong in going back and redoing it, giving it another layer. And you can see I do everything still transparently because, and then I want to have it go down a little bit in the middle there. So I just gave it a little bit more pigment and then I was just gonna drag it out. Could even go in and do one a little bit darker while it's still damp. Just like that. And again, now I'm just very carefully, I'm barely touching. Just want to make sure that it kind of blends nicely. There, I like that a lot better. We have this one here. Needs to be a little darker down here behind that thing. So again, I think I want to take some more of my cobalt blue and maybe a little bit of this green in it. So I still have that kind of bluish hue. And let's go in right down in this little corner here and behind here like that and then right away we go in with a clean damp brush and pull that color out and we can have it a little darker here in the middle so we can drag the pigment down this way and put even a little bit more in and then rinse out our brush before things dry on us and loose the edges I want to get a little bit more pigment here to give it that shape and then I could actually take a little bit of the yellow to just kind of lighten it up a little bit. There, I think that's pretty good and I like that. Now, you know, they're not so flat anymore. So we have another one that I think I want a little bit more on the bluish side and that's this one here and again I want the darkness behind this and I can have it a little dark behind this area like that but then I want to keep that lighter edge against that dark so I come in just take the tip of my damp brush and go into that damp pigment and start dragging it out so we soften the edge and then make sure you remember you have to rinse your brush again damp dab it and then you can go all the way out and that way you get a nice soft edge just that it's a little too straight here i feel so i'm just gonna give it a little more rounding there and then go in and just smooth that edge out there we go it's good and we have this one Again, that's one of the ones that are a little bit more on the blue side. And I want to go in and give this one a little bit of water, give myself more time. And I go in like this, a little bit darker, and start down here, full strength. Really get that dark in here, this little area, so to push out the petals on top. And let's do like this, drag it this way, and then right away grab a damp brush and make sure that we lose the edges and that our two sides still stay light like that 
I think that's good. Get a little bit more pigment in that and just make sure that everything is nice and smooth. You don't want to do too much of this fiddling with it. So I better stop myself. I like that. So pretty, pretty quickly we have kind of given it quite a bit more depth, I feel. So now we can we can go in the maybe this dark green here needs to be really dark right here and behind this one we can go a little bit further up and let's get plenty of pigment on so it doesn't dry on us before we have time to lose the edge. There we go. And then right away, damp clean brush. Let's catch the edge here and drag it up. And I do want it a little bit darker also here. I think that could also be nice to have a little bit of a dip in this petal. So make sure we get the edges nice and soft. And then I want to keep this nice yellow green light edge here. I don't want to lose that. So, you know, it's not about covering up what you had before. It's just about strengthening certain areas. And I'm just putting a little bit more of that darker pigment in while it's still damp. Don't start doing that when it starts drying on you because then you're going to make lines and run backs and stuff. So I'm th pretty happy with that. So let's move on. And the next one I want to do, I need a little bit more water on here. I want it dark, but again, a little bit more on the blue side to push it down. So dark pushes down and so does cool. So we'll use those tools to give a little bit more dimension on this succulent. And see, I'm doing it kind of like this. And then right away, because I did it wet on dry, I better get my damp brush on it so I don't get those hard edges that I don't want. And I'm pulling it up here like that. And I want to keep that light area. I think I want to do a little bit more here middle and then could be a little bit more here like that. And then we want to keep the rest of the light that we have on here. I want to keep that and just get it like this. I think that's good. And then here is kind of a funny little thing. See, there's, you know, there's a little bit of a run back. So that's like a little spot on this pedal. So might as well uh, bring it out a little bit more by putting a little bit of dark behind it. Just like that. I think that could be kind of interesting. Like that. There, you know, they're not perfect. You know, they have little imperfections. So nothing wrong with that. Like that. I think that's good. And want to strengthen that one. Okay, I'm just going to strengthen this one. I think I'll go ahead and give it a little bit of water first. And then I'm going to go into this a little bit. It's dark, but a little bit brighter green. And let's just do it around here and then up here like that. And then we'll go with a clean, damp brush. That's not the brush I wanted. I want this one here. And just lose the hard edge. And the same on this side, hopefully we can. And rinse it out. And I'm just gonna go like that. I like that. And I feel that shape-wise I need a little bit more like this. Like this. Mm -hmm. And just a little bit more around it there. Just following the curves. Yeah, I like that. And we already did that one. And it's not like we have, we don't have to do every single one if we don't feel that they need it. So now we want to go in, let's just do a couple of these here. Again, I'm going to go with a little bit brighter because now we're close to the focal area. So we want dark, that's where you want the most contrast and the brightest colors. It's kind of like the rule. And let's go and do something like this. And before everything dries on us, let's get those edges softened. Like that. And I think I want to go in and take a little bit of yellow on the tip of my brush here, just for a little brightness right here as I drag the color out. I think that's good. I want to do a little bit more darkness there. Just make sure that it gets softened. So that's good. So I spun my painting around. This is the one we worked on. And then we want to do something similar here. And I think I want to put a little bit of water in. And again, I'm going to go with this brighter dark green. Clean up this edge a little bit. And here. And then we want to go up the middle 
give it a little bit more depth and right away clean damp brush we have a little bit more time now because we uh, put that water in so that helps with the uh, prevention of hard edges and again i think i want to take a little tiny bit of that uh, yellow on my the tip of my brush just to warm it up a little bit right here brighten it up like that and that's pretty good maybe we could darken it a little bit more here in the middle give it a little bit more drama and make sure that we don't get any weird run back so hard edges or anything that looks good and then we have this one also needs to be doctored up and again let's do a little bit of water here in the center and that dark brighter green here i'm gonna give it a little bit of an edge like that and I swing it around. As you can see, I swing my paintings around all the time because I don't want to put my hands in wet paint, point one and point two. I don't want to have to hold my hand in a really awkward position. And point three, I don't want to have my hand right over my brush so you can't see what I'm doing. So just, you know, you can also just pull your, you know, paintings around and uh, turn them around however is, is good for you. I'm gonna take a little bit more yellow. Because now we, you know, want to say that it's more on top, so a little bit more brightness wouldn't hurt. And now we want to make sure we don't get some white weird runbacks or anything like that. So let's see, just drag it out there and here. And I think I want to just see if I can just round it a little bit there. I think that'll be better. And I'm drying my brush so that I can just take that excess water away. Yeah, I think that turned out good. There's a one little area here that I don't know if this is there. So I feel this one definitely also needs to be a lot darker. And now I'm going down to this part of here, down here, where you see indigo. And just since I'm going a little dramatic here, I should probably put a little water in to kind of give myself a little bit more time to work. And then in here, really really dark and trying to be really good about getting around these petals that are on top and let's dab in some more pigment this is going to be really really dark there and then as soon as we go out of that little area you want to start lightening up so that's where we go in with our damp brush and just let it run down here spread it a little bit and then clean my brush again and then drag it up and clean my brush and I want it a little darker here still like there and then just with a tip in there make sure we kind of lose the edge and then like this I think it'd be good to just darken it a little bit there and see how I'm just gently dragging up some of that pigment very delicate touch here all right I like that I think that's pretty good. I think lift up a little bit there. Got to be careful with that. Where, you know, I have a lot of indigo in this particular green mix and that's a very strong color. So there, I think that was good. And then we're almost in here, the center. And let's use that same really rich dark, carefully going around these edges here on this petal that's really scooping up. So we'll bring a little bit of that darkness off, up and it's also, you know, has a little bit of a turnover, we can see there. So let's see, right away, go in and make sure that that edge doesn't stay hard. And then here, go like that. And now we need to go clean our brush, dab, dab, and make sure it's not dripping wet. And then just loose the edges like that. And maybe lift out just a little bit. Yeah, that was good. I, I like that really gave it that drama so let's go in and do something similar there but we can maybe take a little bit of the little bit brighter green on too just so it's not all the same and go up here a little bit and then we go up here like that and a little bit here and right away clean damp brush let's take care of these edges put it up there and then we want to pull it around there and like that and it's gonna be a little bit darker also here. So let's see if we can soften that out and still get a little bit of that darkness without it going overboard. 
see, I think that's pretty good. I still want to keep a little bit of that light. Yeah, I like that. With that, and then we can't touch that one. I think we might be able to touch this one here, like this. And right away, let's go in, damp brush, and make sure that edge doesn't dry on us. And then just pull it out like this. Rinse there. I think that's good. We're making good progress here. And then it's this one in here. It needs to be also dark. And just like that. And let's take our little damp brush, soften the edges, and rinse it out. But I didn't want to lose the light there. That's good. That turned out pretty good. Darken just a little bit and a little bit there. In here, really dark. Just dab it in a little bit. And then there's just inside of this one. That's also very dark, like that, right here. And then we need to take a little bit of a smaller brush. And before it dries out on us, you want to just have a little tiny bit of light showing through there. And then we want to lose the edge here. It's going to be more gradual, like that. And then I think there's a little tiny bit of an indentation here. We was way too wet. Did you see that? I'm just going to take a tissue. That's because it's still wet in there. So that wasn't all that smart. But I think, I think we're okay. And then I want to soften on both sides here. Just so you kind of get the impression that there's a little bit of an indentation there on that one. And this one little, this one here needs to be fixed a little tiny bit, just a little area. I think we're pretty close. So now we're just going to, I have these here. This is a little bit darker right here. And then it's going to be lighter as it comes towards the light there. Just a little shadow on there. And maybe a little bit of the same right here on this edge. And then rinse it out. And see here, you know, grabbing the smaller brushes because there. Just, can you see how just a little darker there? And then we're going to let it dry. And then I think there might just be a couple of places where I want to lift out a little bit of a highlight. And then let's set it dark in the background. That's going to really pop it off the page. So now it's time to evaluate a little bit. And if there are little areas that maybe I want to fix. There might be little areas that I want to put a little bit of that quinacridone call on that I use for the red edges. So let's just see if we have any of those areas. A little area here. And this is is all kind of like something that you should do after you've let your painting sit for a little bit to evaluate it best. If you can let it sit till maybe the next day, a couple of days later, take a look at it, pop it up somewhere where you pass by it to just kind of see if you like what you have. I'm going to touch in a little bit of red there. And so there, there are just little, little areas to just make it a nice finished painting that you can do and I usually try to give myself a little a little time to evaluate the painting before I frame it and sometimes I you know I'll notice it when I'm photographing I photograph all my artwork and when I photograph it often that's when you know I see something in the lens you know when I'm looking through the lens it says oh I should fix this and the other thing that I like to do is in my studio here I hold it up and on the opposite side I have a mirror and then that way I get to see it uh, flipped around and that will often tell me that something is off. But um, that's the finishing touches. And here is one area that I feel needs to be improved. Here I, I want to pop up this this petal seat has a little turnover and I can't really see that because the values are almost identical. So let's go in with some dark pigment right around here so we can pop that edge out. And that doesn't mean you have to go up dark the whole way. Just a little bit right here. We want to pop it out. Go up like that and then right away damp brush. Loose the edge. And I think we could probably darken this a little bit more, kind of like here, so it's not so boring. And just like that. I want to pull it out. 
or even darken it a little bit here like that. So giving yourself a little time to stare at whatever you have painted, evaluate it. And if you can't think of anything to do to your painting, that means it's done. So it's a fine balance between, you know, finishing it and overworking it. And that takes experience. And, you know, you'll have to make some mistakes along the way to learn where that point is for you in your paintings. So right here, I want to lighten a little bit. So I'm just going to lift up. There. Almost there. If your brush is not wet enough, it won't deposit anything. So, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, yeah, I like that better. Now you can tell that that comes like that. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do while this all dries is I'm gonna paint the background super dark. So uh, let's get a color out and we have here, it's indigo and I need probably some red to get it to be almost like a black, that's what I want. I don't usually have black on, well, I don't, I can say that. I don't have black on any of my palettes, like out of the tube, because, you know, I like to mix my own blacks and I like to mix them from the colors that I've already used in a painting, because that's gonna make it much, much more interesting. And I have to have it pretty thick here, because otherwise it's going to dry too light. And so I have three brushes full of this color here. So let's see if we can do this area here. So basically I used my indigo, which I've also used in the darker greens here. And I used the quinacridone coral, which is the red that I've used here. And I'm using a little bit of the darker greens that I have already mixed. See, I'm not gonna have enough in the puddles there, so I have to mix myself some more, but it's not a big deal. So there's one area and there's a little tiny area right here. Let's take care of that. This is also the time when you can kind of adjust some of the edges if you have any problems. And there's a little area there. Let's see, I think that'll be good. And this area. And again, just gonna go for the gusto. Try to have a pretty steady hand. Try not to get your hands in it. And uh, then we have those areas and then I just need, I need to mix myself a much bigger puddle so that I have enough for that. So I'm gonna do that off camera. Okay, I think I got a good enough, big enough puddle that I'm happy with. Uh, so let's, um, it's very hard when you do this. Don't put your thumbs in any of your wet areas. And so you've got to concentrate a little bit here. Got my brush fully loaded and I want to make sure that I catch the edges. And it's best to not use, don't use tiny little brushes for this kind of stuff because that is going to be disaster because then you will not be able to cover the area you need to cover fast enough and you'll have to reload your brush all the time. I'm going to go a little one in here um, and you'll get all sorts of brush strokes that you don't want. It's good. And then rinse it out and back to the big brush before things dry. So let's see, that's this edge here. So the brush I'm using here is a number 12 round Mimic Squirrel brush. If you have any natural hair brushes, they hold a lot of water, but this one's pretty good. It's a synthetic squirrel and uh, it's from Creative Mark and it's from the, the set that I recommend for my beginner painters. They get a nice set of very, very good brushes for like under $30 normally. And they get eight brushes. And so it's pretty much everything they need. The only other brush that I like to recommend is the dagger brush because I happen to love that brush, but you know, it's not a must. And Mimic Squirrel, they also have a smaller set with I think four or five brushes. It's a little bit less expensive of course, but I think you can't beat the price of the set of eight brushes. I have that all linked below. All the supplies I use, they're always in all my YouTube videos, they're linked below, so you can just click on the link and it'll take you straight to where you can buy it. It's, uh, I'm an associate with Amazon, that means that I get a little percentage. I have, I don't even know how much it is because, I mean, it's not very much, I can tell you that much, and it doesn't cost you anything, but you know, it kind of helps me a little bit putting out all these videos for free for you guys. So if you need anything, you know, I very much appreciate it if you use the links that I provide. But again, it's not, it's not a big deal for me. But it also makes it easier for you to shop. 
don't have to go searching for it and especially in these times i mean i'm filming this during you know the fall of 2020 so corona times so it's not so easy to just run out at least I don't. I mean, everybody can do what they want, but I'm not a running out shopping anywhere. I don't. I just want to stay healthy and so try to stay out of the public as much as I can. Order all my groceries online, and then here where I live, I'm lucky uh, because you know we can order several of the supermarkets where you can order online, and then you can drive in and pick it up. You just, you know, text them or email them or call them when you're in the parking lot and some nice clerk brings it out and puts it in the trunk of your car and off you go and you weren't exposed to anything and you didn't expose anybody either. I like that system. And honestly, I'm not the big, you know, I'm not so, I know some people, they really miss going into the stores, but I'm not one of those. So I'm lucky that way. There we have the whole background, nice and dark. And now we're just going to let that dry. And then I want to go in and and lift out some highlights and then we'll reevaluate again and call this baby done. So everything is dry and now I'm just going to show you the final steps that I want to do here and it's again not something you have to do, something you can do. So I'm taking one of my round brushes, I think this one happens to be the number eight, but it doesn't matter too much. And now I just want to lift out a little bit of light on some of these petals or leaves. I'm imagining that the light is coming from the top right side. So whatever edge I lift out is going to be a little bit closer to the light. And it can sometimes be the right one here if the petal is like this, right? Then the light would hit over here. So that's that's my decision, you know? It's it's nothing right or wrong. And then here, I want to lift out a little bit of highlight here. And I'm also thinking light against dark, dark against light. That's, you know, a constant thought in my head. And I just kind of, I'm not using a scrubber brush. I'm just using a regular paintbrush. Of course, I don't want to go overboard. I just want to give it a little bit more pizzazz. And uh, then here, I might lift out here. And then on the other side, just a little bit. And I'm using um, a clean tissue, Kleenex, to where uh, you can also use paper towel, but I like Kleenex best for this kind of stuff. And see here was kind of a weird line. So let's see if we can soften that a little bit like that. Can you see how that then gives them, that gives it a little bit extra. I'd even like to lift out a little bit here, right there. And I actually li like to uh, look at how it looks in the in the camera because that way I, um, I kind of get removed from it a little bit so I can look at it with the more objective eyes I feel and see if we can lift out a little bit on this edge here possibly be a really good idea see if that's gonna work yeah that worked fine and so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna lift out some of these edges and then I could leave it like that but since I am here to teach you everything that you can possibly do to kind of beef up your watercolors I am going to go in and put some cast shadows on after I have lifted out some highlights where I feel that it is beneficial and so this is not really that super interesting probably for you to look at so I'm just going to um, uh, finish lifting out the highlights and uh, I'll probably just fill it and then speed it up that way you get to see it but you don't have to sit through it and I'll put a little music on so that's what I'm gonna do now
Okay, I think that's good enough. I have a little mark there that I don't like, and there, and get rid of those. And then my last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try and figure out where I think if the light is coming from up there, there might be a cast shadow here. There might be a little bit of a cast shadow there, here, probably down here, not on that side, but here and here. So let's just uh, explore that. And I'm just going to use this dark color that I use for the real darks. And let's start a place that I know for sure. So if it's coming there, there'll be like a narrow cast shadow right here. There's that, goes out. Then there will definitely be, and so the cast shadow is off a little bit, so I'm gonna do that little tip. So I'm saying that little tip is casting a shadow on here, and then it goes down like really narrow. And you know, it all depends on where the light source is, so you can't really mess this up. Just try and see if you can be consistent. And if this is too hard for you, don't do it. Um, or uh, use a reference photo where you feel that you have, you can see how the cast shadows are. And so here I want to do that same thing that as if you can see a little bit of that tip casting a shadow on and it's a little offset and then follow the shape. And then also because, you know, where the cast shadows are ca cast, you know, that's not a flat surface so that also obscures the shapes or distorts them, I should say, not obscure, but it distorts them a little bit. So you really, honestly, you have quite a bit of freedom here and it can still look correct like that. And then this little guy here is also casting a little shadow on here. Should maybe use a smaller brush for this area, but I managed. And then here, again, there is a cast shadow that's falling on there. And there'll be a little bit of a cast shadow falling here. Maybe kind of like that. And it just tapers off. And then this could cast a shadow, a little bit of a shadow here. Let's see, did I miss anything? Now I should go in and uh, here it's so dark, but there would be a little bit of a cast shadow here behind that one. And there's probably also a little cast shadow on these little areas. And maybe there's a little bit here, right there on this side. There, and I think that's it. But can you see how that just give it a little bit more dimension. And I think it's time for me to call this done. And uh, I hope you learned something and that you enjoyed this uh, little demo and um, that you can find it useful for uh, when you're painting other subjects, flaws uh, and other things, fruits. And you know, it's the same rules really that applies to almost any subject matter that you paint. Just, you know, I can't help fiddling with little edges and I will I will do that because you know I can see there's little areas that you know I can see there's a need a, a little fixing of little tiny areas that's just not interesting at all and it's not necessary but you know if I'm going to frame this and sell it I like to make sure that all oh, there's no like little white sparkles in areas where there shouldn't be a white sparkle things like that where you just clean up the edges and um, yeah have a lot of fun painting thanks for watching and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. That helps a lot for other people to find me. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon in another video. Until then, be safe, be creative, and be happy.